Hello, everybody. Time now for Let's Talk College Football. Nothing but college football on the show. It's going to be a special edition for this Thanksgiving week. Now, we will have my results of how I did last week against the spread, plus five more games to pick. Uh, we will not be doing thumbs up, thumbs down the Big 12 this week, on this show at least, or do the good, bad, and the ugly nationwide. The reason is because I've got a couple of college football stories to tell you that will occupy this time. And there's a reason why I postponed my Let's Talk College Football show because I wanted it to involve what happened last week and what has already happened this week because there were some Friday football games on the November 25th, as you probably already know. The Apple Cup game between the two Washington schools, um, you know, that took place, of course, in Texas against uh, TCU. Uh, before we get into that, though, the other story I wanted to mention, we'll lead off with, and that is the college football playoff. As you know, right now, uh, top five teams are, of course, Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan, and Clemson. We know that, that Bama and Clemson, they take care of business, they get in. If Michigan uh, can win in Columbus against Ohio State, easier said than done, and win next week in the Big Ten title game, we know the Wolverines are going to get in. Could Ohio State make it and not even play in the Big Ten title game? Let's face it. If the Buckeyes win, and if Penn State beats Michigan State, which is expected, Ohio State's going to finish 11-1, but their only loss came to Penn State, and Penn State would play in the Big Ten title game. And, of course, Penn State's going to think, well, um, you know, if we play in the Big Ten title game and beat Wisconsin next week, you know, Penn State's going to feel like they should make it because they have a, a big-time quality win. In this case, they would have two Big-time quality wins, 11-2 season with wins over Ohio State and eventually Wisconsin. That's pretty hard for anybody to argue, and could the Big Ten get two teams in? It's possible. Um, I don't think it's favorable, but I do think um, that you cannot rule that out, all right? Especially if the Pac-12 cannot have Washington um, finish with a 12-1 record. Of course, if Washington wins next week in the Pac-12 title game, the Huskies, I think, will get the final playoff spot. Right now, Washington at number five. And we saw on Friday, it's one of the reasons why I held off doing my show until now, Huskies look dang good today in Pullman against their hated rivals, Washington State Cougars. Wasn't even a game. Washington winning 45-17 and now playing in the Pac-12 championship game um, against Colorado. If Colorado beats Utah on Saturday, otherwise a Colorado loss means that USC, who beat Washington earlier this year, would be a rematch between the Trojans and Huskies. Of course, the Pac-12 championship game will take place um, at Santa Clara, California, home of the uh, San Francisco 49ers. So I think what Washington did today against Washington State is say to the Big 12, you're not going to get a team in. You're not going to get a team in. We're going to do the same thing next week that we did this week, and that is dominate. Washington, Washington today looked like one of the best teams in the country and a team very worthy of going to the playoff. And let's face it, you know, I hope Oklahoma gets into the playoff. hope they can beat the Cowboys next week for Bedlam. hope they can finish the year with nine wins in a row. But if they don't get in, it's their own fault for the bad September that they had, especially getting their asses kicked by Ohio State and, of course, playing in a conference that's not any damn good at all, and that is the Big 12. Let's face it, it's not a very good conference at all. But then again, you didn't have to have me tell you that. Speaking of the Big 12, the other story, of course, Charlie Strong. I remember Texas last Saturday. Wow, the, the RIs pop out of our sockets after Kansas won in overtime against the Longhorns. Man, how often does Kansas win a conference game? How often does Kansas win, period? Not very often. And the fact that a team that brings hardly any money into the Big 12 in Kansas can beat a team like Texas, who brings in more money than just about anybody in the country. It tells you that money can't buy you everything, and it tells you, too, that you need more than Deontay Foreman if you're Texas to try to win football games. Well, that lit Texas at 5-6, and six, and already sources saying earlier in the week that Charlie Strong had lost his job, and this would be the final game today against TCU that he'd be coaching on the UT sideline. And then we hear that Tom Herman, who was number one candidate for the uh, UT job, and that story still isn't over yet. And then we hear recently that, that, um, that Herman, the Houston coach, and LSU – are getting closer to um, an agreement for Herman to coach at LSU. So that story is kind of lacking in itself. And maybe people thought that if Orgeron um, isn't brought back to be permanent head coach and Herman is brought to be LSU's head coach, that maybe Charlie Strong could get a fourth year at Texas. Most of the Texas fans 
Um, from what I have heard, um, you know, it, it was weird because it was a story today that a reporter, I think, from Texas interviewed 100 fans um, as they were entering um, the stadium. And 85% of them, I think, want Charlie Strong to stay. He's got a lot of support, and, of course, his players back him up. Seems like a good guy. Today uh, might have been the final nail in the coffin. 31-9, they lose to TCU to finish for the third straight year with a losing record and to finish the second straight year, bowl ineligible, 5-7. and seven. So, Charlie Strong, only 16 wins in three seasons at a school with multiple billionaire boosters calling the shots. And we don't know who the head coach of Texas is going to be next year. I'd be shocked if it's Charlie Strong, especially after we just found out that Strong is going to be meeting with UT officials, including the athletic director, um, on Saturday, Saturday morning, tomorrow, November the 26th. And meetings like that aren't ever really good at all, unless you like buyouts on your own contract. So Charlie Strong is going to leave with probably $10 million, but it'd be shock. It'd be a shock if that meeting was not a termination meeting for Charlie. So I'm sorry, Charlie. Um, again, nice guy, and he did everything he could for UT football. But if anything, they probably went a step back or two from the end of the Matt Brown era. So for UT, that's a shame because that's a program that should be better than what they are. All right, so let's go ahead now and talk about how I did last week on my picks. Hey, three wins and two losses. So for me to try to get above 500 for the 2016 season, I only have two weeks to do it. Overall record improved but only by a hair. 26 wins, 29 losses. That means I have to win seven of my last 10 selections in order to finish with a winning record. We're going to pick five games right now. We're going to begin with, of course, the Iron Bowl. Alabama hosting Auburn. Tied a huge favorite in this ballgame. Minus 18 points. I love the tie. I think they will put a complete game together. And they're the healthier team. Auburn comes in very banged up. Of course, the game is at Tuscaloosa. Give me the Tide, minus the 18. Speaking of a lot to play for, Penn State, minus 11 against Michigan State. This line's gone down just slightly. Michigan State, I know they played real well against Ohio State, but still a loss is a loss. And you have to wonder emotionally how much that's taken out of them entering this game. Penn State knows the Big Ten Championship game awaits them if they can win. I think Penn State makes a statement and wins by double digits. So give me Penn State, minus the 11. Going to the Big 12 now, West Virginia at Iowa State. And this was not a contest at all uh, last week in the snow when Oklahoma dominated, for the most part, West Virginia, winning by four touchdowns. Iowa State, probably the best game they played all year as they throttled Texas Tech and held the uh, Red Raider offense in check. I think they're going to make this a competitive game. I don't know who will win, but I think it's going to be a single-digit affair. So give me Iowa State at home plus the seven. Of course, Colorado has plenty to play for. Have a shot at winning the Pac-12 South, hosting Utah. Colorado, I don't think, chokes this time. I think the Buffaloes, they go from worst in the Pac-12 South to first. And I don't know how they'll do next week against Washington, but at least they'll earn a bid to play the Huskies for the right to win the Pac-12 championship. So give me Colorado at home, minus the nine, over a Utah team that shockingly got beat by a bad Oregon team last week. And finally... We have biggest game of the year in college football up to this point. You know where this is leading to? Columbus, Ohio. Of course, you don't have to remind this guy right here how good the Buckeyes are, even though I know they're not playing as well now as what they did back in September. Buckeyes, this line has gone down from being a seven-point favorite to now Ohio State being a five-point favorite. Michigan's had one hell of a year. Harbaugh's done one hell of a job, 10-1 versus 10-1. But I'm going to go with the better quarterback. I'm going to go with JT Barrett. And that Ohio State running attack, I think Ohio State will win time of possession. And I think they'll eventually have the edge in the fourth quarter. It'll be much closer than last year's game, in which Ohio State went to Ann Arbor and won in a laugher. But give me Ohio State to win and to cover the spread. Give me the Buckeyes minus five. So that's my look at college football. Let's call college football. Uh, I will have a Bedlam preview uh, sometime next week. Wow, it's going to be a lot of fun. Two top ten teams, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Of course, we'll play on December the 3rd. I'll have my weekly matchup show um, either uh, November 29th or November 30th. So please check it out. Thanks for watching. Let's talk college football. See you next time.